somewhat of a Dr. Doolittle. Angel Animal Medical Center's Dr. Nick Trout has written a couple of books about his relationship with dogs and his life as an animal surgeon. Now he's entered the world of fiction with a book about a vet out to save his father's practice. The Patron Saint of Lost Dogs is the new novel, and Dr. Nick Trout is here. Welcome. Thank you. So, so is there a little bit of real life woven in this? There's got to be. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm blessed to have all these wonderful cases walking through the door of Angel Animal Medical Center every day. Uh -huh. And they're heartwarming, heartrending, hilarious, all kinds of different uh, possibilities of material, you know, that I'm going to uh, see on a clinical basis. But now, writing fiction, I can sort of cherry pick and yeah. try and find the really interesting stories. And you know, if the case didn't quite go the way I hoped, or or it wasn't quite so interesting, I can bend the facts, sure. and that's what I've been able and to do. And there's a little bit of mystery involved. I'm not going to talk about the novel because people can read that for yourself, themselves. But the opening part is about a guy who drops a dog off very suddenly, and your your character is just opening up his veterinary practice. After 14 years, he hasn't really practiced, and his father is gone. But this guy wanted you to euthanize the dog. That must have happened to you in real life, where a perfectly healthy dog, or seemingly, it was an older dog in this case, um, had you know, was urinating on the floor unexpectedly or something. But has that happened where you say, no, wait a minute? Absolutely. Um, there are many instances in which uh, people will bring in an animal, particularly if it was an animal of... Uh, a parent, uh, a grandparent, and they don't know what to do with that animal. And sometimes it's even part of a will uh, yeah. a, a, that that a deceased person wants their animal to join them oh. in the afterlife. Do and you do it? No. I, I've, I, on the instances it's happened to me personally, I've been able to say, you know what, I can. I think this animal deserves a chance. Is, is otherwise in great health. Let's let me see what we can do. Let's get to an understanding because. You know, hopefully we can give an animal a, a chance of a future, particularly if they're in good health. Now, are you a subscriber to the theory that there's no such thing as a bad breed, only a, a bad owner? I mean, we had that horrible incident over the weekend where the two kids, yep. well, one of them jumped all the way over, ended up behind a barbed wire fence, two Rottweilers attacked him and really, really viciously mauled the kid. I mean, whose fault was that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, Angel MSPCA has a, has a very clear stance that our concern is it's, it's behavior, not breed. Yeah. And someone sort of pointed out to me a while ago, you know, the people get concerned about pit bulls. Yeah. If you got rid of every pit bull in the state, that event would still have taken place. It wasn't a, an actual pit bull. And the same with that incident uh, re recently of uh, another uh, yeah. sad case. Um, and so... I have to believe that, you know, unfortunately, you know, I, I, probably some of the most scary dogs I've seen have been golden retrievers, wonderful dogs. Uh, but occasionally they, you know, will show behavioral traits that are, are really something that we can't uh, deal with and shouldn't be tolerated. So I don't have to tell you. This pet thing has gone crazy. I mean, like, <laughs> if anybody's listening out there, you know, invest in Petco or whatever. I mean. I, I, during the snowstorm, I mean, I, I saw people out with their dogs with jackets and coats and boots, and this, it's like, y y there's just no end. That's right. Don't look at uh, during Halloween as well. Yeah, well, all that, these, well uh, that's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it has. I mean, the pets have become part of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, I always joke about years ago, people would whisper very carefully, you know, they're like my child. These yeah. days, people walk straight in. First thing they're saying, this is my child. I, what, what you would do for my child, I want you to do for my animal. And, and that's the new reality. And as such, veterinary medicine has shifted to all these things that we want and expect in our own health care to apply to our animals. And sadly, with that comes expense. It's very, you know, the days of James Herriot in which I would do a procedure on your pet and get a full cooked English breakfast in return are over. Now I'm offering pacemakers and MRIs and, and artificial are... hips and oncology and cancer treatment. Do they have chemotherapy for dogs? Absolutely, absolutely. And these, are, these aren't experimental. This is normal state of play for, for animals in, in modern veterinary medicine. And unfortunately, it comes at a price. It, this, this kind of health care is expensive. And I do have concerns going forward about 
uh, you know, a sense of do you want good or excellent? Do you want first class or coach? And I mm. hope at some point things like animal insurance will come into a, a bigger effect and make a big difference in what people can yeah, afford to do. Yeah, they wait until the last minute and then just pay the whole bill. You know, you're in an area, I'm sure you see absolutely everything. I can't even imagine, but uh, our producer, Tony Collins, had called, Tony Magras had called in a, a dog, an obvious case of dog abuse last summer. The dog was tethered to this pole. She called two or three times. People did come and tell the people they can't do that, can't do that. By the time the third time they called, the dog was dead because it was 107 you know, degrees. Or mm. but, but do do you see those kinds of things where people are just negligent and abusive? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that I, I rarely see that. Uh, we, we do have cases come in every now and again in which animal control have been involved, and they're tragic cases, uh, but they are fortunately rare really, events. That is good to know. Yeah. So what are the big popular dogs? I know bulldogs, which is, as you said, kind of sadly popular. My family had them oh, since I my love... father was a little kid, but they've become like they've been overbred or what? Yeah, what's I mean, I, I mean, I love bulldogs. They're yeah. just fabulous the dogs. Thing. Oh, they're so, yeah, they're so entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, if, if you were to pick a breed of dog, you'd say eye problems, airway yeah. problems, oh. knee problems, tail. cardiac problems, spinal problems, yeah. tail problems. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, you know, they're just, you know, there's a lot to be said for that mutt from the adoption center <laughs> yeah. where life gets a whole lot simpler. What's the, what's the easiest pure breed? Oh, boy. I, I, whew, easiest to, well, you know, least, pro yeah, least problematic. Ooh, I would say, you know. Poodle? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe, but the, they have their problems. I, I currently have a Labradoodle, and I'm hoping oh. that she's not going to have any problems. Yeah. Um, she's the dog that uh, came into my life after the, the kids left home, and I'm realizing already that I'm dangerously attached to this dog. Okay, so have any, any of your customers called and said, wait a minute, that's me in there? <laughs> well, they, you know, it's funny you say that because there are people who come in, I think they really want to be included oh, in see. some sure. of my stories. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's lots of stories in the book. Right, yeah. Very cute. The patron saint of lost dogs, Nick Trout. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so Thanks. much. For something good, not some horrible dog story. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And that is it for Greater Boston tomorrow night. She's saying goodbye to politics now. Former Massachusetts Lieutenant Governor Carrie Healy on her history-making role. President of Babson College, that and more tomorrow at 7. I'm Emily Rooney. Thanks for watching.